Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Jade Cocoon. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and in our last episode, we began traversing our first dungeon. And we got through a good portion of it before having to break and regroup. Now, I kind of began this thought last time, but I love this screen right here. There's just something about forgotten, decrepit gardens that touches my soul, and I've said it before about this game, and I will say it again, it's beautiful. Now, between the last episode and this one, I did a bit of minion merging. We now have a third team member, and one of our existing team got an upgrade. Here's the new look, Crowley 9. Now, I do intend to swap out the member names at some point, but I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about it. Like, maybe I'll do it if somebody gets KO'd. Maybe it'll happen naturally during merging. I don't know. We'll work something out. Nice. So, this minion is Squoot. And I mentioned it in the last episode. It is one of my favorites from when I was a teenager. I love the, the snake minions. I love green, purple, black color combinations. Kind of reminds me of the CPC, now as I come to think about it. And I love that attack animation! He looks like he's a saucy little fella giving a head waggle before he goes for it. Or like he's trying to psych himself up and get ready to make his move. Oh yeah! And between videos, I went to the options and I turned off the capture animations. It doesn't turn it off entirely, however, it just shows that short animation. And I prefer it, especially during some of the later dungeons where you need to catch lots of minions to get a decent gene pool for your merging. And that outcome went better than I could possibly have imagined it would. Got another snake and a great walnut. Now the great walnut is... It fully restores your HP and it increases your max HP by 2. I mean, I assume the upper limit is 999, but... You'd have to cheat or grind forever to see that, so... I don't know. Wait a second, is that a model? How did I miss that the first time? And the second, because I've now walked right past that twice. Anyway, the skeleton keys unlock the chests that you find throughout the game. I mentioned before, I think there are more chests than keys, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to grab them all. Now this is weird, because this is the end of the forest. And I would swear blind that there's meant to be a boss fight halfway through, but... I don't know, maybe I was wrong? In any case, here's Turf Raid, which is A, an amazing name for a monster, and B, going to serve as the basis for our Earth Elemental. Fighting him, we have team member number three, as soon as a summon animation plays out. Introducing Tale of Nobody, a longtime subscriber and repeat commenter. I found a human shaped wind minion when the last video was processing, and I merged him with Scoot to make this cool little bug boxer. And right away, you can see why I want Turf Raid as the basis for one of my companions. I mean, admittedly, he's at a higher level than the things we fought thus far, but he's basically a tank, and that is a really good foundation for a character. Like, if you can merge it with something that'll build its speed, you will have an unstoppable beast. Unless you come across a wind type, but never mind that. Let's let's keep going. Actually, let's hit him once more, just just to make sure we're in a good spot to catch him. Speaking of which, there is a pretty major bug in this game regarding catching monsters. The game stores minion data in a temporary memory bank until you give the minions to Marbu. Which means that if you catch a minion, or minions, plural, then save your game, quit and reload without speaking to Marbu, none of those minions will have any skills or attacks. Like, they will still exist in your save file, They'll still be the same minions with the same designs, HP values, MP values, whatever, as when you caught them. But they won't have any associated data for special attacks or magic. Kind of a game breaker, really. 
and it kind of makes me think that the game was beta tested, but not particularly thoroughly. I mean, it's almost like they ran every scenario as if the player was doing things properly and nothing more. I mean, Chorus, for example. If you go through the tutorial section properly, Chorus is just fine. But if you don't, you can fill your inventory with more healing items than you are technically allowed to carry and get the strongest minion in the game within the first 20 minutes of gameplay. Oh, and speaking of Chorus, we found him! I like how his house looks like a cocoon, that's... Well, it's not subtle, but it is a very neat design choice. Oh yeah! Here's me talking about game mechanics and building a team or whatever. We're meant to be saving the world or something. Actually, we're not saving the world at all. We're saving Cyrus, which is a settlement containing about 30 people. And if I'm honest, I really like the scaled down responsibility in the game. I mean, saving the world would be a much bigger accomplishment, and you'd save more lives, but... I mean, the world is several billion people that I will never meet. If I have to save my family, I must succeed! I can't not fail in doing that! The Divine Spirit defies the Great Father and throws off his shackles. He is now bound to the chains of freedom. That is not how shackles work. BIRDMAN! Sorry. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> This is the kind of thing that I like about this game. We don't need to fight our way back home, nor do we make the journey from the forest gates. We are just sent straight home, and now it's time for some talking. Incidentally, this is a good shot of Garai, and it shows off something I was talking about in episode 1. Her model and character portrait don't fully match up, and that has always bugged me. And when I got the urge to play this, I thought I had been imagining it, or making it worse in my mind, but no. Look at it, those two don't mix. Sorry, zoned out a little bit, I'm getting into this world building. I like this story, you know? In episode 1, I talked about how the game has a hand animated intro sequence, so is it in a track mode? That sequence begins with an animated and narrated version of this story. And again, it ends with the ending of this game, so that's why I chose not to show it off. Although this story seems like it's legit. I mean, if you look at the Greek explanation of the sun, it's Apollo riding a glowing chariot across the sky. That is a best guess explanation of what's going on, but that story right there, it all pans out. Like, there are monsters in the forest. You can just hang out and chat with the gods. And I've, maybe that's just me because I really like fictional worlds where the gods exist and you can communicate with them directly. I don't know why, I just, you know, I worship Ione because she is right there. Was Ione a god? I think she was. Anyhow, I know we got the dragonfly key, but we're not going to go there just yet. I'm going to go back to that split path explore the right-hand side and see what's over there, so... See you guys in a bit! And we're back in the room. I'm baffled, because I'm pretty sure there is meant to be a boss fight in this forest. If the game works the way that I think it does, he won't spawn now that we've completed the forest. But I'm still not going to talk about it too much, because I don't want to spoil it. Oh, I'll talk about this, though. This is Scar Wasp the air version of the Fire Wasp we fought at the very start of the game. I mean, seasoned gamers will no doubt be familiar with the concept of palette swapping, and here we are! The game does have a couple of unique minions, but most of the minion list is Earth, Fire, Wind and Water variants of each monster model. It also has some missable minions, which is kind of a bum deal, because the game doesn't mention that they are even there. I mean, one of them is Arpatron, which you miss if you don't do the capturing tutorial at the start. Um, there's one point where a forest is repopulated after you complete it, but before you do the next one, which you are not told. And 
There is a super obscure one. If you plug a pocket station into memory card slot 1, rather than a memory card, then the capturing tutorial doesn't have Arpatron, but it does have a super strong jackal monster with a random element. I mean, it's a monster that doesn't appear at any other time, either. Huh. Well, this is new. I wasn't expecting this so soon in the game. Thankfully, this is a pretty simple setup, so... We'll tag in Lionard, let him take the lead. Oh, the wind type, Skyeve, he served as the basis for Tale of Nobody. And it's a fairly solid base, because they tend to have a really good well, base attack, which can become monstrous if you nurture it properly. Also, I merged Lionard with one of those little hopping water guys, so he has the ability to heal himself. And, most importantly, he looks like he's a little black dragon wearing blue pajamas and a steeple hat. Isn't he just the cutest little murder machine? Now, in the very early game, you can afford to switch minions on the fly, because the enemies are kind of slow, and they'll let you take your attack first. But even if you don't, you can usually take a single hit from anything you fight, even if they've got the type advantage. But they... I am getting really lucky with random drops today, look at that! But yeah, later in the game, you'll see fights where one wrong move can spell the end, so you'll want to play it smart. Well, hello there, Moist Spear. That is not a legitimate time to use the word moist. I don't think I approve of that. Good stack changes, though, so I'll equip that. Oh, the dagger in my inventory is one that the game gives you along with a knife. I don't know why it does that. But look! My character model has changed, so now I'm actually carrying the weapon I just equipped. Amazing! I caught that guy. Reckon I'll use him to boost nobody's stats. It's gonna get confusing having a character called Nobody. It's like that one story about everybody, somebody, and nobody. You know, somebody broke it, everyone got angry, and nobody took the blame. It does go on, but I... you kinda get the idea. And you aren't the one I fought before, are you? You aren't! Awesome! So much like Turf Raid, this guy has really strong defense, and he has the advantage of being a couple of levels tougher than everything we've fought thus far. So, he's pretty good for leveling, or as components for hybridizing. Oh, that's a lucky strike. I mean, I say he's a couple of levels tougher than the other monsters. That doesn't really matter when I'm a couple of higher levels still. <laughs> Now what you can do is, you can use Levant, and that's a really good idea if you're only trying to chip away the enemy's health, rather than outright kill them. It's possibly because he's got really bad spear technique. Step it up, man! Now there are some weapons with special abilities, like one has an ungodly attack power, one always hits for critical. There's a fun one, always reduces an enemy's health to one, but, by and large, Levant does a really weak attack that is good for cherry tapping and little else. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that minion. You possibly use it as DNA for nobody? Ah, we'll see. Also, the reason I walk up to them is because if you run, they wake up and you lose the initiative. You can usually take two turns if their worldview model is asleep when combat begins. Alright, is there anything up here? I know I'd want to hide something here if I designed the stage. But it looks like no, so okay. I am baffled as to where this boss fight is. I mean, it's a masked man who says he needs to test your might, and it turns out it's just Lewin in disguise, trying to show that he should have been the chosen one. Maybe it's a different press of the game. Because I'm playing the original run, while the version that I had as a teenager was the Greatest Hits re-release. And you can tell, because the disc that I had was black, and the disc that I have now is a lurid orange. Also, I'm just going to show this off. Each forest has a warp like this, which you can only activate with a corresponding key item. I'm not too fussy about finding them, because by and large they aren't useful. 
Like, why do you need a shortcut to the exit when you always have an item that lets you leave immediately? I mean, it does help you avoid certain fights if you want to stay in the forest and grind, I suppose. So, hey, just answer my own question. All right, that's it for the Beetle Forest and this episode of Jade Cocoon. But before I go, I want you to listen to the key sound effect as I leave the forest because it's it is a really good bit of sound design, and I love it. Okay, shutting up now. Isn't that good? All right, join us next time when we begin exploring the second forest. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>